Hiya! Good evening, Carly! I need to ask you a little favor. Hey, uh, are you there? Please respond. Good evening, um... Sorry, but I don't know who this is. Jog my memory? <laughs> Do you seriously not remember me? By any chance, are you bad at remembering your friends' names, Carly? It's me, Leah, you dummy! Uh, Leah... Megan's mom? Surely that rings a bell. Oh, Megan from my son's class. So you're his mom. He says him and your daughter really get along. She sounds like a lovely girl. <laughs> I can't believe it took saying my daughter's name for you to remember me. You really should make more of an effort with your friends. I'm really sorry, Leah. I hope you're not offended. Anyway, what was it you wanted? Can I help you with something? Yes, you can, actually. I need you to do me a little favor. A favor? F from me? And don't worry, it's nothing difficult. Uh, okay, great. So, what is it? It's about your husband, Callum. Uh, will you lend him to me? Uh, excuse me? Um, look, I'm sorry, Leah. I read your message three times over, and I'm still no closer to understanding what you mean. Forgive me for asking, but by any chance, did you make a typing error? What? A typing error? You want me to lend you my husband? Yes, lend me him. Um, what? I need him for the weekend. If you send him over on Friday night, you can have him back on Sunday evening. How does that sound? Be a darling and help out a friend. I obviously can't lend you my husband. What the hell? Huh? You can't? Of course I can't. He is my husband, not some inanimate object. Why would I lend you him? This is the weirdest question I've been asked in my life. Oh, it, it, please, would you stop? You're making me uncomfortable. You have to understand. My mother will be stopping by at the house on Saturday morning. Your mom? Uh, what does that have to do with my husband? I haven't been back to the family house or seen her in over 10 years. You could say the relationship has always been somewhat strained. I got married and had my Megan during those 10 years since we last spoke, so now I'm a mom and a housewife. I don't know how, but apparently she found out and wants to have a role in her granddaughter's life. Which means now she's intent on coming to visit this weekend to meet Megan and my husband. She wouldn't take no for an answer, so I have to take appropriate action. I see. That's all very interesting, and I'm sorry to hear you're in a difficult situation. But no matter which way you look at it, this still has nothing to do with my husband Callum. Uh, appropriate action. I, I don't understand what you mean. That's where you're wrong. It has everything to do with Callum. My mother asked for a picture of my husband. So I sent her a picture of your Callum. You, you did what? Think about it. He's so devilishly handsome. <laughs> what choice did I have? Oh, not just a pretty face, either. He's got a great reputation for being an amazing dad who's always there for the kids. <laughs> He's practically in a different league to my husband. My man's so ugly, it looks like his face was designed by a blind man on drugs. <laughs> and what's worse, he's always away on business. So that's why. I need you to lend me Callum. No way. Huh? But I just explained in detail why I need him. I, I thought you were going to hand him over. I never said that. Not even once. I've got it. Okay, how does this sound? 
if you lend me your Callum for the weekend, I'll lend you my husband sometime. One weekend and you get to choose when. That's fair, right? I don't want to borrow your husband. What's wrong with you? Uh, well, uh, what do I have to do to get you to lend me him then? There's nothing you could do or say that could possibly change my mind. Do you understand? I'm saying this unequivocally. It's absolutely not going to happen. Oh, good grief. Why are you so stubborn and selfish? Which part is selfish? He's my husband, for crying out loud. Anyway, you said your mom's coming on Saturday morning, didn't you? Why do you want him from Friday night? I think that's quite obvious. If we suddenly have to play the part of loving couple <laughs> in front of my mother, straight after meeting each other, we won't seem genuine, and she'll figure out what's going on. That's why we have to spend the night together first doing all sorts of loving couple things. <laughs> if you catch my drift, a <laughs> wink. That way, we'll be very convincing, and my mother won't suspect a thing. What? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I need you to watch my kid while you're at it. As usual, my actual husband is out on a business trip overseas, so don't worry about him finding out and causing any drama. But that also means I need you to look after Megan while the two of us get hot and steamy. <laughs> Uh, don't worry. Uh, the things you're saying are causing me nothing but worry. You're actually disturbed. What? Hey, that's not very nice. Like, uh, wow, are, are you actually this creepy? I'm worried you lost your mind, and I don't know whether I should find you professional help, because who the hell asks this? Tell me it's all a joke. Who'd have thought lovely little Megan's mom would be such a dangerous, perverted weirdo? Should you really be raising children? Oh my god, you're horrible! Are you trying to upset me? Oh, damn, that felt good. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Maybe I did go a little overboard there. It's like my hands took on a life of their own. <laughs> a little overboard? All I'm asking is to borrow your husband and you bite my head off and try to commit me to a goddamn psych ward. Jeez, lady. Anyway, the main point here is that Callum is my husband. Whether it's just for the weekend or not, whether it's for some silly little charade to trick your estranged mother or not, he's not your husband. If in spite of that, you persist in making these creepy, inappropriate requests, I will be forced to take appropriate action. So I kindly request that you cease and desist at once. Goodbye. Carly, help! Huh? What's wrong, Callum? You'll be getting home soon, right? What's going on? That Leah woman you told me about earlier is waiting for me outside the ticket gate at the station as we speak! What? Like she's lying in wait to ambush you? Probably. That's what it looks like. Her clothes are a little... how to put this... tight-fitting? She's wearing a miniskirt so tight she looks like she's ready to pop out of it. I could see so much skin it wouldn't be weird if the police picked her up thinking she's cruising for clients. Her face is absolutely caked in makeup. It's terrifying. Ugh. She just winked and blew a kiss at me. This is so creepy. Ugh. Oh, I guess that means she saw you then. I'm just thankful I noticed before I left the ticket gate, but I won't be able to make it back home at this rate. I should have been more careful. I never would have guessed in a million years that she'd show up and wait for me at the station. She's unhinged. Uh, what to do, what to do... Oh, okay, I got it. Can you go to the next station? I think it's called 16th Street Station, right? 16th Street Station? I'm gonna come out on my bike to meet you. Let's meet up there and then go home together, okay? 
Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I have to leave little Derek with my mom first before I get on my bike, so it's probably going to be about 30 minutes until I get there. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to head over to 16th Street Station and sit tight. Great. Let's meet at the northern entrance, okay? It's a plan. See you soon. Thanks, Carly. Carly, are you there? This is urgent. I went to meet Callum at the station after he got off work, but he turned around before exiting the ticket gate, and it seems like he went back into the station. What's going on? Me and him are supposed to be spending the night together. I pulled out all the stops. I tidied the place up, bought wine, candles, even baby oil, but he just vanished. What with us being a couple for the next three days, I thought it would make sense to come and meet him after work. Because that's what couples do, right? I never would have thought that a big, strong, handsome man like him would be this shy. Can you persuade him to come out of the ticket gate ASAP, please? I'm getting cold in these clothes. Plus, we need to spend as much time as we possibly can together tonight to prepare for my mother's assault in the morning. He won't come no matter how long you wait. Huh? Callum's already at home with me. <laughs> what? No way. He's still inside the station somewhere. I know he is. He didn't even leave the ticket gate yet. He's having a relaxing soak in the tub as we speak. Huh? Uh, no. Uh, no, no. You're making some kind of mistake. I saw him at the ticket gate just a little while ago. When I winked and blew him a kiss, he got all shy and turned back. He knows I'm waiting for him. He wouldn't just leave me stood around like this. He came home from the 16th Street station today. Huh? 16th Street? He messaged me begging for help as soon as he saw you. Then turned around, got right back on the train, and got off at 16th Street. I came out to meet him, and we went home together. We just arrived at the house. Wait, this isn't how things were supposed to be. We had a promise. We most definitely did not have a promise. In fact, I made it very clear that the answer was no, didn't I? But Carly, please. My mother will be here in the morning. I have to show her that me and my husband Callum are deeply in love. I showed her his picture already, damn it. How could you hang me out to dry like this? If you don't let me borrow him tonight, I'll be in big, big trouble. Why don't you just be honest and introduce her to your real husband? That way you won't scare the living daylights out of any innocent people, and your mom gets to meet your actual family. Everyone wins. Why not just say you got a little carried away and wanted to impress her? Play it off like you were joking and, and you're all embarrassed. I, I'm sure she won't mind. I can't do that. I'd never live it down. My husband's only redeeming quality is his salary. How can I introduce a man that unfortunate looking to my mother? Besides, it's only one weekend. What's the problem with lending me your hunky husband for a measly three days? <laughs> Callum would have a good time. My mom would be proud of me for bagging such a great husband. Everyone wins. Oh, God. how many times? How many times do I have to tell you? Callum is not your husband. Uh, uh, Can I kindly ask you to stop making me so angry? This is me holding back. You have no idea how hard I'm trying not to flip a switch on you right now. I just know I'm going to say something I regret if you don't cut this out right now. Don't push it, Leah. I swear it won't be pretty. Carly, I... Do you understand what I meant when I said you were disturbed? That you need professional help? Since you're not actually my problem, maybe I should give a certain person away on business right now a call and explain the situation. Guys, don't do that! Okay, I'll stop. I swear. I I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Ah, you finally get it. Oh, what a relief. Oh, that's right. How could I forget? I'm so silly. Here's the thing. I may have already called your husband and told him exactly what you've been doing. 
all of it. Chat logs and all. What? You're bluffing. How would you have my husband's number? And what the... I phoned kindergarten and asked for Megan's emergency contact details, which they kindly obliged. Oh, one more thing. He's not away on business anymore. Want to know where he is? That's right. He cut the trip short to come home and deal with his deranged wife. My guess is that he's waiting at home for you to get back. Don't keep him waiting, okay? What have you done? You have no idea how bad this is for me. My life is over. Oh, yeah. And let's not forget your mom. I wonder what she's going to say. Huh? Apparently, your husband got her number off a friend of yours. He said she'll be arriving soon. Looks like they'll both be waiting for you when you get back. Oh, aren't you lucky? <laughs> no way! Oh, I just got another message from your husband. I just spotted my wife dressed like a $5 prostitute while driving past the station. I'm going to take her home now. Ah, oh, looks like your taxi's here. No! With that, Leah was successfully captured and taken home where she couldn't do any further damage. Her husband told me a couple of things when he showed up at our house with some chocolates to apologize. First of all, as you probably expected, he decided to divorce her. It turns out she'd been treating her husband like her personal ATM for a long time before this, and had a habit of spending all his money on clothes and alcohol. Her attempt to steal my husband was the straw that broke the camel's back. Everyone has a limit, and this was his. What's worse... He said she almost never did the housework and showed no interest in childcare. So he was, for all intents and purposes, a single parent, despite living with his wife. He told me all about how Leah would force his mother to watch the kid while she went out drinking and partying into the early hours. Naturally, all of the above considered, her husband won custody of Megan. Having nowhere left to go, Leah went back to the family home after having no contact with her parents for ten years. Apparently, the reason she became estranged from her parents in the first place was because they forced her to do ungodly amounts of housework that bordered on manual labor. Having nowhere else to go, she had no choice but to return to her old life of servitude and is now exhausted 24-7, seven days a week due to being worked like a dog by her overbearing parents. Michaela! Where are you? Reply immediately. Oh, I bet you're lazing around the house doing nothing as usual. Hurry up and get over here and do the housework. You can begin with cleaning the toilet and bathtub that you were supposed to do yesterday. Come on, chop chop, get moving! Oh, that reminds me. There are some weeds left over in the garden. Make sure you pull them up. We can't have the delightful view of my garden ruined by overgrowing weeds. Then there's the shopping and preparations for tonight's supper. Pronto, hurry up and get moving! Oh, please, will you give me a break? I'm heavily pregnant, you know. The baby's due this month for crying out loud. It's not as easy for me to move around as you seem to think. Besides, I just took you out in the car while you went clothes shopping like you asked me to. Oh, please. That was just a quick shopping trip. Don't over-exaggerate. You're not getting off the hook that easily. To tell you the truth, Harold told me it's dangerous to drive when you're this heavily pregnant and asked me not to. Please. Will you just give me a break? Even if not for me, think of my baby. Good grief, Michaela. Why should you get to live life on easy mode? Why did you even move in with my son if this is your attitude? Why did I move in? What? If you're even remotely grateful for us being so kind as to welcome an orphan like you into our family, surely you can tolerate doing things you don't want to, to help out sometimes. I don't see what my parents have to do with anything. Oh, 
be quiet. You're lucky there's a lock on your door. If I could get in, I'd come over and drag you over here myself and force you to carry out your duties to this family as my son's wife without having to rely on these tedious, godforsaken messages. Oh my god. Do you get the message? Get your ass over here now! Stop! Wait! Please don't bang on the door like that! Well, get the hell out and clean my house then! Quickly! I'll kick the door down if you don't get out here now! Seriously, stop it, please! Sis, are you there? <laughs> Huh, Michaela? I'm at work right now, so I can't speak on the phone. What's up? Help! What's wrong? Even though I'm heavily pregnant, my mother-in-law does nothing but make unreasonable demands of me all the time. She forces me to drive her places and makes me go over to her place to do physically demanding housework. What the heck? I did as much as I could, but... I've reached my limit. I can't take it anymore. You mean she's bullying her son's heavily pregnant wife? I've never thought of it like that. But she just demanded I go over and do her housework, then came over and started banging on the door like a maniac when I didn't immediately do as she said. She threatened to kick the door down if I didn't go out. Oh, she seems to have calmed down for now. I think her favorite TV show came on. I'm scared of what's going to happen once it ends, though. I have a feeling she's going to come over again. I'm really scared. This is awful. Your mother-in-law sounds unhinged, like actually dangerous. Have you told Harold about this? Well, I have. But she knows when I'll be home alone, and only ever does this when he's not here. I see. Huh... Oh, that reminds me. Harold's away on a business trip right now, right? Yeah, he'll be back the day after tomorrow. I know we have a lovely two-family home here, and I consider myself lucky for that. But things are so tough with my mother-in-law next door. I can't go on like this. I understand. Can you hold out for another hour? Um, I think so. I think his mom will be watching her TV show for a little while. Can you get all of your important things together before I get there? I'm about to leave now. But you're at work. Don't worry. They're flexible enough here to let me go and pick up my sister in her hour of need. Everything's fine on my end, so please think about keeping yourself and that baby in your belly safe, okay? Okay. Thank you so much, sis. Michaela! I heard from your sister. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, somehow or other she kicked up a bit of a fuss when I left the house, but I was safe because my sister was there to protect me. I see. The most important thing is that you're safe. Your sister recorded my mom's hysteric when she realized you were leaving the house. Oh, she did? My mom called you every name under the sun. I've never seen anything like it. Is that what she's like all the time? Yes. I put up with it for a long time because she's your mom. And I didn't want you to think I was disrespecting her. Plus, even if I told you, I didn't know where I'd begin. But since we are where we are, I'm going to show you the messages she's been sending me. Okay, it can't be avoided. I have to know. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through, Michaela. It's okay. Thank you for understanding. Oh, by the way, I'm staying at my sister's apartment right now. Yeah, I heard. I'm getting ready to come home myself now, too. Your sister pulled a few strings and saw to it that I'd be allowed to come back from the business trip early. I plan on showing my face there later on today. But I've been thinking about doing a little something. What's that? I'll fill you in on the details when I see you later. Got it. I'll be waiting. Thank you, Harold. Oh, but... 
If you're tired, you don't have to wait for me to get back. By all means, get some sleep. We can always discuss it tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you for looking out for me. Mom, can I speak to you for a minute? Oh, Harold. You messaged at the perfect time. Your old mother's having a really rough time of it. Michaela left the house. Huh? Her sister turned up out of the blue. I don't know what kind of lies Michaela's been filling her head with, but she called me every name under the sun. She drove off with Michaela and all her luggage. I don't know what's going on. What on earth could have caused all this? When you say she called you every name under the sun, what do you mean? What exactly did they say to you? Well, things like... I'm pregnant, so you're the one who should be doing the housework. Or, I don't even know why I bothered moving in with you in the first place. Oh my, even just thinking about it makes your old mother want to cry. Interesting. Since we've come this far, I'll just come out with it. I want you to know, I've always done my best not to interfere in yours and Michaela's relationship. But Michaela's victim complex is just too severe. Or she's too stubborn, or, or she's malicious. I'm not sure how best to describe it. I can't help but wonder if this is what they call mother-in-law bullying. Or maybe she thinks she should be treated like a princess because she's pregnant. Look, Harold, I really hate speaking ill of your wife like this, and I didn't want to say anything at all. But if Michaela doesn't reevaluate her attitude and ways of thinking, we're all going to struggle an awful lot from here on out. Hmm. So, Mom, are you done making excuses now? Uh, excuses? I know that the reason Michaela left the house was because of the messages you were sending her. Oh, really? Did you know she was staying with her sister, too? Of course. Listen, Mom, I need you to remember that Michaela is heavily pregnant. Of course I do. Your baby is always at the forefront of my mind, son. That's all I've got to say. Bye. Okay, you'll be home from business the day after tomorrow, is that right? I'm going to speak to Michaela and convince her to come home before you do. So please don't worry about any of this. Michaela? What the hell do you think you're playing at? Oh, hi. Not hi. I heard about how those people who came barging into our house were your relatives. Just because you wanted to move out doesn't mean you had any right to take my belongings with you. What on earth were you thinking? I'll be telling Harold about this. He'll divorce you. Divorce, I say! Mom? Harold! Good timing. Listen, son, just listen to this. Michaela's trying to make me leave the house. She called a small army of her relatives over, and they're currently carrying out all of my things and dumping them on the street as we speak. Oh, surely this is unacceptable. If anyone should be moving out, it's Michaela, for heaven's sake. Michaela should be moving out? Yes, of course. You're the one who built this house, after all, Harold. If she doesn't want me, your mother, living next door, then she's the one who should be leaving. Don't you think so? Lord, give me strength. This is probably why she has no parents. Mom, it's true that Michaela doesn't know her parents. But it's not like it's because that's what she wanted. Besides, 
She has a big sister who's been like a mother to her since she was little, and she's loved dearly by all of her relatives. I want you to stop speaking about her like that. Oh, I don't want to, Harold, but please consider my position. Anyone would get upset after being treated as horribly as I have. I've been nothing but the doting mother-in-law to that woman. Horrible treatment? That's right. Horrible. Just horrible. We may be living in a two-family house, but I always made great pains to ensure Michaela was as happy and comfortable as possible. I just don't know what more I can do. To think this is how she repays my kindness and generosity. Surely you don't want a wife like this. Oh, that's right. I bet you feel as betrayed as I do. You're going to divorce her, aren't you, son? Please hurry up and divorce her and sue her for compensation while you're at it. Listen up, Mom. I want you to think carefully. Who do you think the house belongs to? Huh? Who it belongs to? You, of course. Wrong. Um... Well, then, your father? Wrong! What? Well, well, then whose is it? Michaela's sister. What? This house belongs to Michaela's sister? That's right. But, but wait a second. Come on, Harold. Do you really think that this is the time to be making jokes? Stop it. You can't seriously be claiming an orphan from a family of peasants would have the money to build a two-family detached house like this. <laughs> Who are the peasants? Michaela and her sister, obviously. Did I not tell you before? Michaela's sister's the CEO of the company I work for. CEO? The land that house was built on was originally where her dad's family home was built. Her sister inherited it, and now she manages everything. Really? I'm pretty sure I explained all of this to you while the house was being built. Uh... Maybe you forgot this, too. What? Forget about what? The reason Michaela's sister had a two-family house built on the land she inherited. The reason? It was originally intended to be a two-family house for both me and Michaela. And Michaela's sister and her fiancé to live in. What? But when her sister's fiancé's company gave him an overseas assignment, the wedding ended up getting delayed. So me and Michaela moved in first, and her sister decided to delay her moving in until the fiancé got back. But for some strange reason, upon realizing one side of the house was empty, you took it upon yourself to move in using my dad's reassignment to a rural company branch as your excuse. Um, but... When I reluctantly approached Michaela's sister to discuss the matter, she very kindly said you could live there temporarily until her and her husband got married and moved in. You see, it's not your house, and you were only ever supposed to be there for a short while. I don't know anything about this. Me and Michaela's sister explained the situation to you in minute detail. We literally could not have made it any clearer. Do you have no recollection of that? Dad knows about it too. Huh? Oh, you mean that thing we spoke about that time? Do you remember now? I just chalked it down to Michaela being opposed to the idea of living next door to her mother-in-law and making up convenient lies to hide her selfishness. What? When the conversation was over, I just assumed she must have agreed reluctantly. I thought you'd end up winning her over, so I didn't think anything else of it. How the hell does your mind work? I've heard of false memories before, but this just takes the biscuit. Uh, but I... Anyway, upon hearing about your tendency to act like a ruthless dictator when no one else was around, the real owner of the house, Michaela's sister, was absolutely livid. Livid? <laughs> Don't over-exaggerate. It would be weird if she didn't get mad over her pregnant little sister being bullied by her mother-in-law, don't you think? That's why you're the one who needs to get out of the house. Son, you don't mean that. Oh, yes I do. Which is why, Mother, you'll be going to stay with Dad in the company apartment he was given for his assignment at the company branch. What? That's why your things are currently being carried out onto the street. 
Wait a second, that's going too far! Make it stop! The worst thing is, I say Dad's on an assignment at a rural branch, but in reality, he was told it was more like a permanent transfer that would most likely last until retirement, since you couldn't bear to leave your comfort zone, and wanted to stay in the home and neighborhood in which you feel so comfortable pushing people around instead of going and living with your husband, you decided to come and bother us instead. I hope you know that since his position there is more or less permanent, you'll probably be living there until old age. No, I told you, I can't! I don't want to leave this house, I like it here! I thought you'd say that, but it's already too late. Just be grateful you have somewhere to go. No, please! Bye, Mom. Fortunately, I had a lot of people helping me out through all of this. Of course I'm grateful to my husband and sister, but there's also my other relatives, and particularly Harold's dad, who immediately decided to take my mother-in-law in when Harold told him about what had been going on. I heard that my in-laws would be moving into a room in an apartment block provided by Harold's dad's company. My husband calls my mother-in-law a lion at home and a mouse abroad. According to his dad, the reason she bullied me was because she had too much free time on her hands and had nothing else to do. He said that's why he thought her living with him in the company-assigned apartment would do her good. Later on, I successfully delivered a healthy baby boy. Me and Harold also finally started living together with my sister and her husband after they got married, and they're super helpful when it comes to looking after our son. Now we're all living happily and comfortably in a stress-free environment.